There we go. All right. <laughs> And that was the end of that ESC. It blew up on that crash. What's up, everybody? My name's Aaron Ciotti. Everybody calls me Ciotti. I need a fucking haircut. Look at this nonsense. What is happening? Why didn't you guys tell me about this? Jesus. All right, I'm going to read people out so that it, it, there's not a million people. Here we go. Supercell's in here. You're welcome for the Brat Tune. Uh, we'll get it even more dialed in. Uh, ben Aiton is here. L Ooh, that's a good one. L Lit... Lit Little Killer Little Killer Gamer. Sick. Uh Budget is here. Engage. Nick S, Tech Chief, Mr. Propeller, OCD FPV, David Lisowski, Simon Saucy, uh Jafar Zidi, Explosive fr <laughs> Explosive Fruits. Yeah. Uh House Blog is in the house. Uh Bad Habit, Private Island, Alberto Zabala, Da Rosa, Mackay, Daryl Hickman, Daniel Tapanier. You guys better hurry. Class, uh, Aperlo, Nana Mama Mama Mama, Mark Emerson, Ben Atten, Joe Corneliuson. Oh man, you guys are typing as fast as I can read them. Rhino, Jesse T, Remy Tim, uh, <laughs> FR34, KY, Emmy, uh, <laughs> Grey Dogs, Nabi, Chrissy, Miroslav, Explosive Fruits again, IMAX, and Jersey Boys FPV. Anybody else you're too slow? Ah, I'll hook you up. Marcel, Ben, House Blog, Nana Mama 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 Mama, and Oliver Bodwell. What's up, everybody? Um, look at this mug. True RC sent me a really cool mug. Thank you, True RC. Hmm. Uh, Mr. Propeller says hello to Kristen. Can you guys see her? Yeah, you can. There she is. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> All right. Um, let me do housekeeping and sell some car insurance, and then we'll do some real stuff. Housekeeping is... Ciotti FPV on Instagram, Facebook, here on YouTube. Uh, if you hit the subscribe button and if you hit the little bell button, it'll send you an email or maybe even a notification on your phone when I pop up with live streams. Um, I do every Sunday at 3 o'clock here, every Monday at 10 o'clock. That's Eastern U.S. time. And then, I'm sorry, wait, 10 o'clock tomorrow. 10 o'clock Monday nights. Uh, Monday nights are when we do giveaways. We'll talk about that in a second. And during the week, I'll usually do, I'll try to do like a random stream. Maybe I'm like editing something. I'll just throw the stream up. Typically, I won't throw the microphone on. Um, just so you guys can hang out, ask questions, whatever. Uh, car insurance sales includes my Patreon, which is down below. Uh, on the Patreon, I have recently actually started using the tiers. So three bucks gets you in the door, gets you access. Um, I have a lot of articles in there. 
Um, I've learned a lot in the black box beta flight group and I try to kind of boil some of that stuff down into little bite-sized chunks and I put it up there so lots of good info um, specifically on like RPM tuning, uh, RPM filter tuning rather, uh, some good PID tuning little kind of simple to follow uh, things and now giveaways so every Monday night uh, there's gonna be a couple of patreon giveaways and if you go over there you'll see uh, there's three different tiers five dollar tier for tiny whoop stuff ten dollar tier for uh, micro brushless stuff and then there's a twenty dollar tier for five inch stuff uh, on Black Friday I got some really good deals on a whole bunch of stuff and I said you know what let's see if we can get the patreon really cooking uh, get some giveaways going so there's going to be a giveaway every Monday. So, for example, for five bucks a month, you're going to get entered into four different giveaways for Tiny Whoop stuff. Um, and then, ooh, there's also a thirty dollar tier, which puts you in all the other ones. Uh, and there's there's a fifty dollar tier. Anything above the twenty dollar tier, there's a forty two, there's a fifty, whatever. Any of those, you get entered into everything. So uh, yeah, it should be super fun. I got some really good shit. Uh, Tiny Whoop stuff, there's a cool little case over there, there's a charger, there's a 10-pack of uh, 1S 300mAh batteries, uh, some other stuff, uh, micro brushless, there's a run cam split, ooh, that's a good one, uh, Tarsier, not Tarsier, uh, Caddx Turtle, uh, RXSR over there, set of drib motors, what else, uh, run cam racer, FPV camera, and then on the five inch side of the world, there's an all-in-one AIO um, flight control ESC all-in-one, a Akon AK32 ESC, which is my preferred ESC and pretty much the only one that hasn't exploded. And there's gonna be some frames. Uh, I snagged a couple really nice frames, Stingy V2, uh, LeDrib frame, a uh, Vanover race frame, and I also have a mini quad test bench crush frame. Uh, I have a, 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 a Squid, which is a flight control ESC motors receiver uh, VTX camera that I'm gonna transplant from one frame to the other. Um, I haven't flown heavy frames in a while, so I'm gonna drop that into one frame at a time, fly it, get used to it for a couple days and then pull it apart and then the frame will be up for the giveaways so yeah and I mean some of the hundred dollar frames right this is a hundred dollar frame this is a hundred dollar frame uh, the Vanover frame is I don't know 50 60 bucks I guess so yeah I uh, hope you guys are psyched it should it, it was super fun we did it last Monday just kind of screwing around with some random stuff that I had um, and then I'll probably do a um, super chat giveaway or two on a Monday night so, yeah, uh, come on over Monday nights for that, or just go to the Patreon. So, I'm, I'm trying to do it in the Patreon so that you don't have to come to the stream. Like, the, the, the live streams are super cool uh, to do the, the giveaways with, uh, what's it called? I just said it. Super, super chats. Uh, but, for people that can't show up on Monday nights, I don't want to, like, punish them, right? So, I'm doing most of the giveaways on Patreon so that you can go do it. Uh, the link is down below in the description. Uh, you go on there, and then I'll message you if you win on Patreon. So you don't have to be at the Monday Night Streams. And yeah, who wants to post a link? Uh, Mac Eye wants to post a link. I'm going to make you a mod real quick. You can post it. This is the one time I'm going to do that. So you asked early enough. <laughs> who did I just do that for? Mac Eye. Okay, cool. Mac Eye, post it, and I'll unmod you. So, yeah, that's that. Uh, car insurance has been sold, and I think we can get started. Um, Chris E. says, uh, DJ said that YouTube takes a big percentage of Super Chats. Is that true? I don't know. Um, I have not, from what I understand, it takes like three months for the money to come out of YouTube. So, I've only been at it for about a month. So, I'll know at some point, but... Um, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. If if they do that, that's not the end of the world. But, uh, yeah. So, MacEye, you're posting a Gmail link. If you need to post a real link, hurry up, because i gotta make I got to make you a non-mod. First thing we're going to do today 
is look at, uh, or we'll do a um, pilot spotlight thing. All right, I see you posted it, MacGuy. I'm going to remove moderator. Cool, now I don't have to forget about that. Uh, link for Ben Adam bind fly sky. What do we got? What's 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 happening here? Let's see. What do we got? What are you guys up to? Oh god! All right. Let's see. What are you looking at me to? How to wire and set up fly sky iBus and man, I don't know anything about fly sky. So if you guys need any info on fly sky, there's a drone mesh video for you. Uh, how do I go back? There it is. Okay. Cool. So yeah. Anybody that needs Fly Sky info, there you go. Don't ask me. I don't know a goddamn thing about it. I know uh, Free Sky and Crossfire. Uh, I'm going to do an hour for you guys here today. So we got 50 ish minutes. Like I said, we're going to jump into a pilot spotlight. Um, Benoit Finke put a video up last weekend, I guess it was, when he was hanging at Steele's place with his favorite French pilots and a couple other EU pilots. A bunch of them I didn't know about, so I have a feeling that you guys also didn't know about them. Uh, so yeah, some of them were really good. I've subscribed to a whole bunch of them, and I figured I would spread the love. Some of these guys only have a couple hundred subscribers, and they are gnarly. So uh, tonight we're going to talk about Harsey FPV, who I had not heard of. Let's go over to the right monitor and see if anything blows up or breaks. Looks like we're all right. So let's take a look at Harsey's most recent video. Hopefully the audio is going to work. Uh, I'm killing my audio. Let's watch some. What do you guys think about that? That's a sick one. And as he says in the beginning of that one, put some headphones on. Go subscribe to him. Rewatch that with headphones on. The uh, soundscape in there is pretty special. Let's do one more. Let's do one more Harsey video. This dude is real good. Real, real, real good. Uh, instinctive ripping. That looks like a cool one. Let's go for it. I haven't even watched this one. Can't cope with myself tonight I think I made myself now the enemy And this is coming to me Let's try to 
That was cool. What a spot. Jesus. That's one of the sickest spots I've seen. Holy crap. And some of those reversals were gnarly. Good lord. Um, Bad RX asks what the best Cinewoop in the market is. I don't think anybody really knows yet. Um, maybe Squirt the... Shendron. Yeah, maybe the original. The OG uh, Shendra and Squirt. That would be my assumption since everybody else is just copying them. I'm going the Acrobrat route with mine. Um, because I want to take advantage of the, uh, the clean dirty setup, uh, and there are some Stan FPV ducks that should work on this. So that's what I'm going to do for mine. The only thing I don't know is whether or not the, um, GoPro mount is going to be far enough forward to keep the ducts out of view. Um, that's something that the actual Cinewoop frames do a really good job of because they're kind of perfect purpose designed for that, but... My hope is that this can become a really nice um, Cinewoop. You guys will get to see it when I see it. Because um, whenever those ducks are available, I'm going to snag them. And as you guys can see, there's somebody else here. Ooh, look, it's Jamie Ann, the little stellarist of foxes. Good. Your camera's over here. I was like, it wait is. a minute. <laughs> well, you would think, like, looking at it, you would go this way. Yep. But your I, body is over here. I have to figure out how to reverse this. It's weird. Like, when the I try to, is strange. Like, oh, let me hold this up to the camera. Woo! You yeah, know? No, like, it's like you way go, over there. Yeah, it's crazy. So, Jamie came to hang yesterday. We went out flying, broke some shit. Um, he broke some shit. I, I just broke, broke some, some props because that's like my MO. Was he? <laughs> she tried hard, though. You'll see you the video. Some... I'm about to post the video. Nice. Like, I'm actually uploading right now. You so. had some good slams, too. I'm just, just better flying, at recoveries. And you're flying more durable frames than I am. Oh, yeah. Well, you, my arms are, like, <laughs> this big, and yours are, like, as big as my pinkies. So. I have noodle arms in real life and <laughs> on my quads. Um, so, yeah, then we went out this morning and flew, and we rushed back for you guys because we just love you that much. Um, so, Plus yeah. it started getting cold, so. It's cold. Like, I wasn't about, like, my nose started getting all cold and red and runny. <laughs> and I, was like, like, I was like, I can't fly because I'm <laughs> sniffing too much. Um, so let's see those Jamie Ann questions, um, cause I doubt she's gonna just stand the entire time. Um, I can hang out for a second. I mean, I'm watching, I just swapped batteries, so. She's on that 4, she's back to the 4S game, So, guys. yeah, Little Stellar Fox is a mouthful. We've actually talked about this, that it's like the longest FPV no, you name in the game. Just saying that. So. LSF, okay. right? LSF. LSF. It's just, that's. Let's look for some questions. Alright, so I didn't answer any questions. I feel like a bad streamer. Um, I can read questions off. Ooh, awesome. Where awesome. I'm going to find over there. I'm going like to find it? one more Harsey video. It's blonde now. It's it's light, guys. I like, didn't think it was as light. Like, the first thing he said, it made me feel really bad. He was like, oh, your hair is really light. And I was like, is it bad? Because it's have... getting lighter. Like, the plan is to go, like, silver with little bits of purple and blue on the ends. Look at this, guys. Look how light it is. It looks good, but it's lighter than I thought. That's way too bright. Pull it, it away. It is. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, there we go. That's better. <laughs> it looks good, though. I really like it. Kristen likes it, too. Who was that flying? Oh. Yeah, no, that was... I was okay. over in the other room, yeah. and that was... Uh, I was Harcy. almost about to come in here and watch that video, because the... Um, Harcy FPV. Guys, go sub. Yeah. This dude is gnarly. 562 subs is way too little. Um, get over there. There it is again. Um, let's throw one more Harcy video up. Yeah, he, uh, that sounded good, and your reaction makes me, like, I sat there, I was like, oh, I want to come in here just because of the music, <laughs> and then your noises, I was like, oh, I need to go and see what's going on in there. Uh, long range? No, I want more thrashy stuff from him, man. He's got it going on. Proxy Paradise. Uh, uh, proxy Paradise. Beautiful proxy forever. Switzerland. Yeah, Proxy something. One of those. Not beautiful anything because it'll be long range. Oh, we got to go Nature Flow. We're going Nature Flow. Yeah, proxy Paradise. All right, we'll go Proxy Paradise. That's going to oh, yeah. Come on, that's going to be like some tight tree shit. It's going to be good. I have faith. Flying right. to us. Ditching our mic.
like, yeah. That was pretty dope. What was the answer to that question just now? <laughs> oh, oh, which one? The Bite Frost or DJI? <laughs> Bite so, Frost isn't done. Okay. Period. So what I'm going to say is that my experience with Bite Frost was terrible. Um, like everybody's was. And it really was. The big thing for me is that you have to have an umbilical cord and a ground station to use the Bite Frost. And I, I really love my DJI system. Uh, I'm not like just saying that it really is amazing. Not only that, but I sort of changed Seattle's lights this weekend because I made him put it on, <laughs> even though he was like, no, I don't want to do it. And yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it really is like it, it's next level. You guys, it's not just like hype. It really is kind of amazing. Yeah. It's and really I good. hate to say like, I didn't want to like the system. Like, let's be totally honest. I didn't want to, but it really is amazing. And me and him flew with no problems, no interference, no anything. I've flown with three other analog pilots with absolutely no problems with anybody, you know. Yeah, I don't um, blip her when I plug in. She doesn't blip me, which you is know, really which, nice. Which, you know, it's been on the internet where people are like, oh, blah, 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 can't fly together. But we had no issues. The only I had my uh, SkyZone 030, so I could watch him, but he couldn't watch me. But eventually that'll be a thing where it's not, you have to have different goggles. They'll figure um, it out. Right now... Yeah, see, I've tried to go back and forth, and uh, I've tried to go back and forth with analog, and every time I put on analog, I'm just like, it's just not the same. It's, it's not. just not the same. Nick, hopefully soon. If All I have to do is get down there, I, and that's, that's the problem. Um, my day job keeps me here. But uh, soon. I will get down to Orlando soon so that you guys can hopefully see me on the road. I keep channel. trying to grab him when I drive down because I drive down and it's like, I don't, it's kind of a little bit out of the way to come and grab him, but I try to grab him and it just like the weekends that I go down just haven't quite matched up to be able to get him at the same time, so. Because um, I drive that seven hours to go down there, you guys. I don't take a plane. Super. I want to do that. I'm. Uh, we'll see. The the air. I I was shocked at how small the air unit is. Um, I that thought actually, it yeah. looked a lot bigger. What when I saw it in her rigs, I was like, oh, that's totally doable. Um, it'll fit in an acrobat, I think, if if just there's a little bit more space in there. So we'll see. Um, what else do we have? Man, Ben, you're having issues. Ben, message message Bardwell. He knows. Um, Whatever that protocol is that you're on. And he'll get back to you. For all you guys, for the record, one of the most insane things about Joshua is, like, if you message him, email, Facebook message, whatever, he'll get back to you. Like, it might take him a few days because he gets blasted by everybody. <laughs> but he will get back to you. Like, he has always gotten back to me. He's always gotten back to everybody I've told to message him. Um, just give him a couple days yeah, and he'll totally help. Yeah, we just need to help. go to Knoxville. But we're going to do that that's anyway because that's not, it's only like two hours from my place Yeah. to go up to Knoxville. So I just need to make Siati come and meet me after I get off of work on a Friday and then we'll go up to JB's for the weekend. Ooh, that's it. When is that weekend that you're going up though? Like next weekend? 14th maybe? Yeah, next weekend. I was, is that really next weekend? I, yeah, I was supposed to be going to Orlando next weekend, but I can't, oh. so... It's, I think it's the weekend after that. Let me see. Like the 20th? Because uh, I'll events? be at the beach then. Events. Here we go. It is 22nd. Uh, wow, it's a while. Okay. Yeah, that's the weekend after. Okay. We'll see. Maybe we can do it. Uh, try them HDO2s yet? I have not. I did get to uh, get a very in-detail walkthrough of the Orcas while I was down in Florida, though. And... Um, those were really nice. They're super comfortable. Uh, <laughs> it was, the, the workers were actually really super duper cool. And um, the guys sat there and they walked me through like all of the things going on with them and all of the future things that are going to be happening with them. And yeah, that was pretty impressive. I didn't get a chance to try the HDO2s though. Not yet. Um, apparently... If you're Italian or have long eyelashes, try the HDO2s before you buy them um, because they might hit your eyeballs. See, I would worry about that because my eyelashes are pretty long. Me I, too. I'm not trying to like... I have Italy eyelashes. <laughs> um, Those HDO2s cool. though. Yeah, yeah no, I want to try them. Uh, JB was going to let me try his while we were uh, where in Seattle. 
Mm. And I just never happened because we were flying HD like the whole time. So that's the way it goes. All right. Um, get those. Oh, there you go. Do they feel cheap? No. Um, I was actually really impressed when I when I held them. They felt really really nice in hand. They felt really good on the face. They they're probably realistically about the same weight as a pair of fat sharks, but they feel lighter on your face. I guess maybe it's the angles or something, but uh, are they gonna be widely used in a couple years, fat sharks? Man, uh, I don't know. I am typing an answer to Ben, which is that you have to join his Discord to get onto his What's the word? No, you have to join his Patreon to get on his Discord. There we go. Um, which you should do anyway. You should every single one of us should support Joshua Bardwell on his Patreon because he has done a shitload for us. We've all used his videos to help fix our stuff, and two or three dollars a month is not too much to ask. So go do it. Uh, less than a cup of coffee. Less than a cup of coffee a month. God damn it. Um, awesome. You're welcome, Mac guy. Uh, Jamie, what flame frame are you flying nowadays? Asks um, Daniel Maurer. Okay, so that's kind of an interesting question because I'm flying several different frames, but I'm also building several different frames. So I've got two HD ones um, from Rotor Riot, and then I've got a marmot that I just built up that is actually beautiful. It's the first analog plaid I've built in a while, and it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, and then I also have uh, Jordan and Paul, aka Jet and Nurk, sent me a one of their practice rigs. So I'm gonna build that up and have a big giant, heavy, <laughs> seven inch giant kilo <laughs> kilo quad that I'm gonna rip around and you know work on some nice juicy DRL style lines. Check out this baby. She is beautiful. This is the first analog quad I've built in a while. I'm not a big fan of Armaton frames, but that's a good looking frame. I've got one of those new uh, Foxier razors. They're like $17. And the lens is a little bit more fisheye than I'm used to because obviously I've been flying this one and it, it's not quite as bulbousy. Um, but the colors and the response is really nice on this camera. Like it goes from light to dark pretty well um, for 17 bucks. Like, come on, you can't really. Women build sleek clothes. <laughs> yeah, this this is a really pretty. When when she showed wait, me this wait, build, wait. I was like, "Damn!" The that's... lighting the lighting is funky over here. It's shit. Yeah, here this will be better. Oh, it's gonna be so bright. Little bit better. Ah. But yeah, this is a really clean build. I I I'm not typically impressed by builds, but this is clean and tidy and two thumbs up. Yay, Armitan. Uh, oh, thank you, Jack Sean. Laura. I appreciate your appreciation. But yeah, for the most part, um, I've been flying the HD1 lately, and I'm also going to be building up a... I have one of the new Skyliner V2s that I'm going to put some Cricut motors on, and I've got, like I said, that big 7-inch quad that I'm going to build up. And, um, yeah. I've been rocking these guys, though. Question for how is the latency with the DJI goggles? Um, well... There is none. Yeah. I didn't notice it. Yeah, I'm going to say that the only time I ever noticed any latency was when we had all eight of them up in the air at the same time, and our bodies were, like, within a couple feet of each other. After we stepped, like, a couple feet away from each other, we were probably, like, eight feet away from each other, um, it was absolutely fine with all eight of us in the air. That happened a bunch of times in that video, too. It was so funny. <laughs> but... Yeah, it was, uh, it was, the latency is really, like, it takes, I've gone a third of a mile with power lines and trees and all sorts of crazy nonsense, and then I went and dipped down and was messing around with this, uh, like, pavilion. A, it was, like, a third of a mile away, and there was all these trees and stuff between us, and I still had perfect video, no latency when I was down there, but my bars had dropped down to, like, two out of the five and that was the point that i was like i need to get out of here because knowing my luck i'm gonna like go in just the right angle and not have anything anymore and lose it but uh no 
it's kind of amazing. Like, I've always had terrible video. I That's something that a lot it's of people true. don't know. But my video has always been, like, unreal, like, just awful. <laughs> and no matter what anybody or me or anybody does, like, for whatever reason, I just have always had awful video. So this has been, like, an amazing experience to actually be able to see while I'm flying. And I mean that, like, I'm not saying, like, I, I'm complaining about a little bit of static. I mean, like... The first time Drew Camden ever put goggles on with my video, he goes, how are you flying right now? And I'm like, oh, this is the best my video has ever been. And uh, yeah, so having the HD stuff is really nice because I can see like details on trees and stuff. It's really cool. Um, David just asked about the Apex frame. It is the best frame I have ever seen, felt flown um the engineering in it is amazing it is stupidly stiff uh the five and a half millimeter arms are dumb strong and it's squished x which i prefer and it's just awesome uh it's a little expensive i fly 45 or so dollar frames so i'm probably gonna wait a while to to jump over but if i buy another frame for myself it'll be an apex no questions asked Billy, thanks for the uh, 25, man. You're always the man. Thank you, brother. Um, David, difference footprint, like a couple million. Wait, what are you talking about, David? Uh, oh, what do you think about the Apex? Oh, okay. So that's a really good question. The Apex compared to the Alien, totally, totally, totally different. I spent uh, two or three months with an Alien and broke a bunch of arms and a base plate. The Apex is like... So, the Alien is an old frame. The Alien was created back when 4mm thick arms were the thickest, um, and when individual arm ESCs were the thing. Now that 4-in-1s are much more popular, it makes sense to skinny the arms out and thicken them up, and that makes a huge difference. The Apex is a frame that I doubt you'll be able to break, um, unless you really hammer it into something, like one of those slams where... You're looking for pieces of the quad as you go to get it. Um, and the alien is not like that. The alien, you can... I would retrieve the alien and be very surprised that there was a broken arm. Um, Apex is not like that at all. So, yeah. Big, big, big difference between those two frames in terms of durability. What else? Uh, about what radios are you guys using? Um, well, he... My my analog radio, I'm still using, and for, like, my whoops and stuff, I'm still using my QX7. But I have... Oh. I have switched, and I do use the actual DJI radio. Um, I haven't switched all my stuff over to Crossfire because it's really just easier to not do that for me. Um, but this is actually... The gimbals have a little bit that I wish they were smoother, like how my hall sensors are on my QX7. I didn't um, notice that. But huh. the radio itself is really like ergonomic. It fits really, really well in my hands. I don't have to stretch my thumbs out, whereas like on this QX7, it's way heavier for one. Like it feels heavier in my hands. But to get to the inner corners, I have to stretch my thumbs out like a lot. So, uh... I like to, uh, I actually really it's enjoy really nice. this radio. It, it's, it feels, it does, it feels really good. Like it, I was worried it would feel cheap and it feels really, really nice in the hands. Like if I was ever going to get a really, really nice radio, I would get a Futaba because they are by far the best radios I've ever flown. Um, they're so nice, but you know, that's why you pay like $600 for them. So... <laughs> They're absolutely the best radios, but this is really nice. It really is. Like, I, I didn't think I was going to like it because of the shape. I just thought it was a weird shape and it wouldn't fit for my hands. I forgot that I was flying this within like 10 seconds of actually flying it. It just, it fits. And I have big, crazy long fingers. Yeah, so like that, his hands are a lot bigger than mine and he still thinks that they're comfortable. Yeah, th this this radio is legit. And it's got all kinds of cool stuff that it does, right? With the D DJI. Oh yeah, like you have the, the record up. button that's right on top of there. Um, you can set your switches however you want them. And I really just have like my normal switches set up. But you can also use the back button on the radio when you're doing stuff in the goggles. And that's kind of neat. Um, but yeah, having the record button is actually really nice. But 
it'll start recording in the goggles. As long as you have a memory card, it'll start recording every time you arm the quad, which is really, really neat um, because I'm one of those people that I could never get my fat sharks to auto record like they were too old or something like the power wasn't good or whatever the case was they just wouldn't do it um so having that like knowledge that every time i hit the arm switch on this radio with this quad i have hd dvr from the <laughs> goggles like i put a whole video out on my youtube that's only dvr from the goggles um but i i uh i have hd dvr from the goggles even if i lose the quad every single time it's really nice. It, it, the jumper of Futaba knockoff, I don't know if I would say that. Like, nothing's really going to touch how super comfortable those Futabas are. Um, and this is me. $100 with um, the Hall Effect gimbals because the original gimbals eventually started twitching. Um, if you that. have big hands, 2X7 all day. And then the little micro uh, crossfire is my jam so that I can still put the damn thing down. Uh, I'm going to put, oh, I just did. I posted a link to Jamie's Patreon. Head on over there. Super Deluxe. Thank you. I will for sure give half of that to Jamie. Um, but What's that? you guys should also go over to, um, her Patreon. She does just like I do. Oh, that's the other thing that I do is put, uh, videos up early and unreleased stuff. So like rough cuts and shit like that, put it up there. You're the only one to get to see it. You feel special. We feel special. You guys comment. We smile. <laughs> It's awesome. Yeah, I'm actually getting ready to... I was currently uploading when I walked in here, um, but I'm putting up a special edition of the YouTube video that I'm putting up uh, for everybody, but I'm putting, like, a longer, different version up for just my Patreon or my patrons. Um, you know, and it's... One dollar gets you early access on mine, and then the other tiers, you know, I send out letters, and I send out stickers, and I, you know, stuff like that, so... Um, Euro with an awesome question. Best camera for micros since the Micro Eagle doesn't fit in hardly any micro frames. Uh, to be honest with you, the Tarsier, the, the FPV feed in the Tarsier is phenomenally good. If you don't go that direction and you just want one of the small ones, the reason why I got two Run Cam Racer 2s for the giveaways is because they are awesome. They're CMOS. They are the same sensor and guts as a run cam Sparrow, uh, which was the purple, the purple run cam. That's so, nice. yeah, th that's my favorite. Uh, the Falcor is pretty much known to be the best of the um, and I have, Foxiers. I've, I've tried those in a couple different sizes, and all of them are just absolutely phenomenal. Like. What's Caddox's? Do you know? I forget what... Caddox has, like, one camera that's really good. The problem They're with Caddox is the... Um, no, non non HD. The problem with Caddox is their quality control kind of sucks. Um, that's like a known quantity. The Tarsier's been fine. I've yet to hear a Tarsier bl of uh, blowing up, but I don't know. I don't get Caddox's other than the Tarsier for that reason. Have I ran into any fail safes with the DJI transmitter? No. Um, I have been behind buildings, like full skyscraper sized buildings. I've been behind banks, which, you know, they have those big vaults and stuff. Um, and I've been, like, in the back of parking garages, and I've not had any connection issues at all with my radio or my goggles. Um, like I said, it gets a little bit... Uh, if I get too far away, it'll start breaking up on the sides because I have focus mode set. But you can That's still see really in the cool. Center. That was really cool, too. I noticed that immediately, and it totally doesn't affect your flying. Like... The, the sides can go super distorted. It just doesn't matter. You're not looking at the sides. That was, that's, I was super impressed by that. That's the, that's, I think that's one of the big things that um, Bite Frost needs to figure out. My experience, like, so. I don't, I didn't have a very uh, real experience with Bite Frost because it was one of those things. It was like 25 feet in front of us and it was breaking up. Um, and I don't know if it's because we had an early version before, like, production or whatever the case was. But it just wasn't a very good experience, and it's not something that I personally would invest my own money into. Um, you know, I did get part of my DJI stuff for, you know, I'm part of Red Riot. We were uh, sponsored in all that jazz, so it is one of those things. Like, I did get part of that, but I have spent quite a bit of my own personal money buying more HD stuff because it really is, like, a, it really is that good. It's, it's better. I, like, it just is. 
you like, can see where the hell you're going. It's 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 sort of like flying through a GoPro that gets a little bit fuzzy on the edges when you get too far away. <laughs> yeah. It's... And it's got all of the OSD. Plus, they just updated to be able to do, like, I haven't plugged mine in to update it, but now you have, like, beta flight OSD and all sorts of other stuff, which is super cool. And, you know, 1,200 milliwatts and all that jazz, which none of us are using, but it's kind of neat. Bob Men, first time on the stream. Thanks for coming, man. Hang out. Love it. Uh, Bob Men transferred his Mobula 7 to a 65 frame. I'm guessing that's the beta 65 frame, uh, but wasn't able to get the PIDs right for it to fly good. Do you have any ideas? So my starting point is always to look at hardware rather than trying to tune around problems. So when I rig this not flying right, I will never just try to tune it out in the PIDs unless I'm certain that the hardware is sound. Because of the fact that you move from one frame to the next, I'll bet you the hardware is the problem because it sounds like it was flying fine in the Mobula frame. So forget the PID tune, leave the PID tune alone, or go stock, go totally stock with a PID tune because a, a, a stock tune in Betaflight 4.1 is really, really good. Um, and look at your hardware. Make sure the motors are all bolted down. Make sure none of the threads are touching the um, windings on the motors. Check that the frame is not too wobbly. Um, take the props off, go into beta flight, go into the motors tab, spin each motor up to see if one of them is more vibey than the, than the other one. Um, change your props. Sometimes the props can be the problem. Some props are just not balanced at all right out of the package. And check the soft mounting on the single board. Um, oh, I guess the other thing would be just, just check the frame. Some of the frames are just wobbly as shit. Um, take the frame like motor to motor or if it's a whoop frame it's kind of hard to do this but just give it some give it some force and, and try to bend the frame and like just see if it's different if there's one arm that's too weak that's the problem uh so yeah don't try to tune around it look at your hardware first if you go through all the hardware shit and you're totally certain that the hardware is fine uh message me somewhere facebook instagram wherever and uh we'll go down the rabbit hole or jump into patreon uh you can message me in there and I'm starting to actually, like, when people have real hard, tough problems, I'm starting to put posts up in the Patreon so that we can group think it and we can all kind of walk through it. Um, but, oh, and I also do have a couple posts on the on Patreon about specifically this. Um, they're, I think they're called, like, motor heat tuning, which is the same issue. Like, a tune not running right creates motor heat. So troubleshooting motor heat is the same thing as troubleshooting a tune that's not working right. Um, so yeah, I have all that shit listed out in the Patreon post. You just scroll down a bunch, you'll find it. And yeah, don't, for all of you guys, if it's not flying right, don't start tuning the PIDs. Always look at the hardware first because you will spend days and days and days and days chasing your tail on the PID tune when you've got an arm that's starting to delaminate, which I should have mentioned. Um, on a regular frame for for you to tell if there's an arm starting to delam sometimes you can see it sometimes when you look at the uh, the skinny side of the arm you can literally see it starting to delam if you can't um, take it motor to motor and try to twist them so it's it's great putting force this way to try to bend them down but that typically won't catch delams delams you'll catch by trying to twist the motor so grab opposing motors and just literally try to twist them. And if you have an arm that's starting to delam, that arm will twist quite a bit because it the, the laminations are the only way that it gets strength. The twisting direction is the weakest direction. So there you go. Some more troubleshooting for you guys. Look at all these questions. You guys rule. What else do we have? Uh... Do you have to use the DJI controller? No, you don't. You, do um, you can use any radio you want that has crossfire. Just you have to, I would suggest going and checking out JB's tutorial on how to do it, and you just have to do a couple of wires a little bit differently when you're doing your soldering, and it's good to go. You can't do 1,200 milliwatts because it's not legal. You can only fly at 1,000 milliwatts, so nobody's flying at 1,200 milliwatts, but it is able to happen at this point. Don't do um, it. But it is 100% illegal to do that, so, I mean, 
Don't do don't it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Because if somebody comes out and tests your milliwatts, you know, and you fuck something up, then, um, or you mess something up, this might be a good show. I don't know. <laughs> you mess something up. Uh, do you guys like Spectrum? I've never flown Spectrum ever. Sorry. Because everybody I knew flew Free Sky, and that's just, uh, when I started flying, it was just like, that was the only way to go, because the people that I found near me, they were like, this is what we do. There is a nickname for people that fly Spectrum, and it, they're said to be on Team Failsafe. Team Failsafe. Um, Spectrum has a lot of advantages, but one of the biggest disadvantages is they tend to failsafe a lot. Um, Spectrum is great for planes, from oh. what I hear, and uh, helis. Uh, apparently, Spectrum radios are like the best thing for planes and helicopters, so not so much mini quads, though. Um, and if you're getting a Spectrum, or thinking about getting a Spectrum because... You like that it's multi-protocol. I'm pretty sure that you can get... Do the jumper. Yeah. Or Oh, yeah, right. The jumper. Jumper right. 216 if you're looking for multi-protocol. That's right. That's the only or way to go there. I th I'm pretty sure you can get little piggyback bastards for Tyrannize to... Uh, I think Tyranni is the plural of Tyrannuses. Tyranni? <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's Tyrannuses. I just said it. Tyrannuses. <laughs> Tyrannosauruses. Uh, Spectrum users are said to wear eyeliner. <laughs> Yeah, so that that's a good point uh, Billy just made. Drew flew Spectrum for a long time. So it, it works. Like, Spectrum does work, but he doesn't fly it anymore. And he didn't go directly to DJI. He went to FR Sky. And he so. doesn't... I don't think he uses his DJI radio. I think he has Crossfire set up on his rigs. I can't remember, mm -hmm. but I think he actually uses his personal radio. Um, because you can Engage, nice, isn't it great? Um, so last stream we taught Engage was was pull, um, pulled apart his Tyrannus and started to turn off the detents. And I went on a rant as usual about every single one of you guys should take your detents off. And then also, um, so when you take your detents off on a QX7, the um, the throttle stick will become fully loose. Like if you if you push it up to the top, it will fall down because they deactivate the second little slider in there that gives this a little bit of um, a little bit of resistance. So you're going to want to tighten that one up. Dream. And the way that I do it is I hold the radio like this, vertical, push the throttle all the way up, and I just tighten it up until the point where it stays. I literally run it as loose as I possibly can, but the throttle will at least still stay up when it's when it's vertical like that. But like you, you guys can kind of see like if I just bump it, like it goes down. Like it's it's trying to fall down. Um, that's how I like to do it. That tends to prevent you from when you, when you jam the throttle stick up, you have a tendency to add a little bit of yaw, getting it as smooth as possible here, um, prevents that from happening because if there's a little bit of sideways force, it'll want to go up rather than over. Notchless, yo. Turn your notches off, everybody. Yeah, make that so What's a detent? The detent is like when you start pushing the throttle up, it goes click. Click, 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 click. And what I mentioned last week is you've got a thousand points of um, resolution on this throttle throw. And then when you turn those detents on, you have about 20 because there's like 20 detents. So like you, you just, you'll never have the sensitivity on the, on the uh, throttle stick, which is hugely important when you have the detents on. There you go. Steve-O did it on his tiny whoop. Awesome. Based on that, your throttle's too loose, Snoopy. There you go. You can loosen it up. You might not like it. Some people really don't like it being that loose. Maybe um, some. Maybe you like it nice and tight. I really. <laughs> <laughs> and there we have it. That told, that took us. Ah, it's not bad. It took us fifty minutes to to get <laughs> to get one in there. To get the first one. <laughs> yeah. Um, advice, Stevo. Advice. Uh, advice on what, Stevo? Ask your question again, because it was just your previous comment was just a statement. Uh, do we miss anybody? Mm. <laughs> oh, nobody's hating on Drew. I Nobody. mean, his eyes are dreaming. No. <laughs> if I, I hate when people give him crap because I don't know if you're aware, but like a lot of girls, myself and his girlfriend, who is absolutely amazing, think that it is a uh, pretty hot. So it's a secret, guys. Just saying, as a female, I see that, that and I'm just like. That's pretty sexy. <laughs> Not everybody can pull off eyeliner. Proton to go. Uh, spread the word on the false acrobat duo build video. I did not, but we're going to do it right now and tomorrow. Uh, what was the problem again? 
Proton, um, was it the clearance of the flight controller to the ESC? I think so. Um, when you're doing your Acrobat build, build guys, um, it's really important to use your thumbs and your fingers to move the clean and dirty setup around, like compress the, the grommets up and down, front and back, left and right, to make sure that nothing's going to hit it. Um, the clean plate will move more than you think. So just literally get like get angry with it. Like move that clean plate around as much as you can and make sure that nothing is going to con uh, contact because the first big slam that you have, if something's going to contact, it's going to contact really hard. Um, the problem that uh, we had with the prototypes was that we were putting the flight controller up too high and the USB port was the highest point. So a bunch of us, on our first hit, the clean plate came down and crushed the USB ports. Um, so a bunch of us had blown up USB ports on our split uh, boards and flight controllers. Um, but there's other stuff that can hit. So yeah, pay attention to that. If you're building an Acrobrat, move that clean plate around. Maybe even if you really want to check it, leave the grommets out and just dry fit it with no grommets. Um, and then you can move the, the clean and the dirty plates the full amount to make sure nothing hits. Uh, also, don't put a, you should be okay, but don't put a zip tie on the rear standoff because the rear standoff is really close to the deck. So if you put a thick zip tie back there, um, the zip tie is just gonna hit the deck and you're gonna get no soft mounting on that back point. There you go. Um, ooh, Proton uh, clearance to button and top. Oh yeah, right, don't use M3 nuts. Yeah, 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 yeah. Use M2 hardware for your stack. Don't use M3. Uh, Tiago, thank you, brother. What's R? What's R mean? I have to learn. There's all these funny different um, types of uh, currency. The the favorite is kroners, Swedish kroners. I don't know what R is, though. I got to learn what, what they all are. R, what could R be? Rupees? Is it rupees? Oh, that if it's rupees. Cool. Respect, Tiago. I love it. <laughs> Um, Supercell, have to warm it up. Once you do, you'll love it. Awesome. Um, <laughs> nice, super. See, the thing is, though, is that he would take you out for the nice dinner. You would try, and he would just be like, oh, no, I got this. Don't even worry about it, because he really is, like, that nice of a guy. Brazilian. So. What is it called? Um, Reyes. Oh, R-E-I-R-E-A-I-S. Reis. Cool. Reis. Rand? Oh, Real. Oh, Real. Real. Well, Rand okay. is in South Africa. Uh, so what is it? Like, right. no. Come on, Tiago. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of clarification. What is it? <laughs> nice, Billy. Billy's going to take him And out never for call him again. He might cry. Don't do that. Come on. Yeah, Drew's a really, really nice guy, guys. Um, really, really just, like, we're very lucky to have. He's one of the people that we're very luck to, lucky to have in this hobby. Um, one of my favorite people that I've met, like, yeah. overall through this hobby is definitely, um, you know, he gets a lot of shit, and a lot of people are really mean, but he really is, like, really, really, really an awesome human being that genuinely cares about everybody that flies and just wants everybody to keep flying, so. What up, Harsha? How are you? Um, Brazilian Real. Brazilian? Is, am I, are we pronouncing it right? Real? Right? Real? Real? I think that's Dabble right. Dabble on the world of RC cars. I, I did growing up. Um, I see that Interceptor. I want to get in on that. That looks so dope. That looks super cool. How have they not gone ham with FPV on RC cars more? Because, look, have so you ever jumpy? done it? Yeah, I know. Have you ever put, like, a normal camera on a normal RC car? Yeah. We did it a couple of times, and it's like a... Da -da 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 -da, and you can't even... <laughs> you try to focus on what it's you're an doing. Epilepsy fest. And it really is, like, <laughs> it is just terrible. So the fact that the... The interceptor like is nice and um, it's so smooth. How do they what do, it's doing? How like, are they I, doing that? They've got dampeners. Like they've oh, got like awesome. uh, rubber grommet dampeners. I think is what's going on there. That's so. cool. That's cool. I can dig that. Joseph, good call. <laughs> we'll get back on topic. <laughs> um, what else do you guys have? We're uh, two minutes off of an hour. I'm not gonna cut it in two minutes. We'll, we'll give you guys a little bit extra, but um, hit me with it. Hit us with the I'm questions. Here. It's true. Bill, my batteries are done charging. I could leave. <laughs> um, I have to go back and get back to work. This job thing. Engage is on the nitro cars, man. That's legit. My uncle had this big ass like one six scale nitro car that used to scare the shit out of us. 
Um, yeah, Sean, very true, very true. Drew and uh, Joshua, Th those are actually my my two big ones that I'm just like, thank God for them. Very very lucky. Um, Doc oh, met Jamie so and Drew sweet. and Zoe at Chase Field DRL. They're best people. Yeah, Chase Field, that was awesome. Like that experience was so amazing. Getting to fly the racer and getting to fly it like freestyle out in the desert was super duper cool. And then really like meeting all the people and seeing how many people were at Chase Field for that event. Like that many random people that had no idea what FPV even was because there were a ton of people that weren't pilots. And they were there just interested because they were like, what is this? And it was so many people. It was such an amazing experience. All right, Tiago, or no, Harsha rather, with an awesome question. GoPro settings for real steady. Um, first and foremost, GoPro 6 is what you want. Hero 6 is what you want. Uh, if you're going to do a session or a 7 or even an 8, you have to get a crazy mount that's like very floppy and wobbly and not very secure or safe. So if possible, Hero 6, they're 100-ish bucks on eBay. And then you want to do 60 frames a second. You want to turn the GoPro stabilization off. You want... Oh, shit. What's the other one? 60 frames a second is the big one. That's That really helps uh, Real Steady to be really steady. Um, <laughs> All right. <laughs> what a great off, name. Yeah. Turn off uh, auto white balance just because it sucks. Um, shit, I thought there was another setting. Uh, Willard has a really good video. Uh, look up. Uh, Wild Willie's video, it's from months ago, but it's it's got all the good stuff. But 60 frames a second is the big thing you want to do, and Hero 6. Those I think, are the two main uh, ones. Paul Nurkula has, especially for the little guys, yep. if you're looking to do some stuff with anything smaller than a 5-inch, I would go and check out Paul Nurkula, uh, Nurk FPV, his channel. Um, he does a lot of acro, or a lot of cine whooping and stuff like that, and he does use real steady while he's using his cine whoop um so i would definitely if you have specifically for the little guys i would go and check out some of his stuff and his pages in general and go and get a little bit of information there because he's kind of like the go-to when it comes to getting that nice smooth real steady footage with the tiny quads one of the things that you guys might have when you get onto his channel is like some in the photography world we call it fud fear uncertainty doubt um he goes into a lot of detail Stick with it. Don't bail. You'll if you only get ten percent of what he's saying, that ten percent will be really good, um, and you will get a lot out of it. Just stick with it. Uh, Willard's video is probably going to be a little bit simpler for you guys, so check that out too. But but if you want to get stick in depth, with Nurks, like yeah. you, you really want to know what you're changing and why, he gets into like into the details of different settings and different um, aperture settings and just everything. It really is. Super duper useful if you're interested in really knowing what you're doing so that you can change per situation as opposed to uh, just knowing like a go to setting to set it on. Um, in the visitor. Now, da, 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 da. Yeah. oh, for Nurks, he'll have to pull it up because he's got like several screens sitting here and I'm not doing that. Um, da, 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 da. Somebody asks. Oh. So you're going to get it. I woke him up for this. I don't care. Me and Harry have a very love-hate relationship. <laughs> I've This is like, this weekend was the first time he let me give him real pets. And see, I've been around with Harry since like, before he got sick. And then I remember seeing him right before he got the tube and right after he got the tube and just all of the in-betweens. So this time getting to actually give him pets and stuff was really nice. Was oh, super. he's getting squirmy. <laughs> Look at that belly, guys. Look at his neck is all healed. Yeah. Oh, man, he got my He's lip. He's doing so good. <laughs> all right, cool. Another couple minutes, and we're going to shut it down. Best cause... place to sell your HDO is uh, FPV Marketplace, maybe? I don't know. Yeah. That would be my go-to if I was going to sell uh, my stuff. I'm uh, holding on to my O3Os and stuff like that. Nerf lives 45 minutes. Oh, yeah, he lives that close. That's pretty cool. He's never home, though, so... If you can catch him while he's there, that would be your your issue because he's literally on between DRL and all the jobs he does with his cine whoops. Um, he's literally on the road like all the time. Would you guys want Nurks YouTube? Your yeah. turb? It's coming. It's coming at you. What time is it? Four o'clock? 
It is 403. Nice. One more question and then we're out. So it better be a good one. The Here best question of the day. Do you Perfect. like nuts in your brownies? We went to the, um, on our way back from flying, uh, my wife Kristen was like, we can make s'mores brownies if you guys get the brownie mix. So I went to the brownie mix. She went to the next aisle over and uh, I, I saw, I, I legitimately wanted to know because I like brownies with, with nuts. So I screamed over the aisle at her. Hey, Jamie, do you like nuts in your brownie mix? And, like, there were all these other people. There were a ton people. of people that, like, started <laughs> were, like, laughing. And they were, were all super there, cool. And everybody. And then we go to, like, leave. And as we're going to walk out the door, this woman says to me, and she looks at me like like she did a double take. And she goes, oh, you're the girl that likes nuts in her brownies. And I was like, oh, no, that's not me. I don't like nuts in my brownies. Oh, here it is. This is the this is the 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 question we'll end it on. David Lazowski, who's your favorite pilot? That is a hell of a question. Um, mm. I think I will go with Drew because I try to mimic his style um, in a lot of different ways. I'm gonna say that it changes for me. I have several, uh, and it depends on what I'm watching. Cause, yeah, like. It's true for me. Yeah, I've decided. Oh, uh, see, I couldn't pick just one. I just definitely couldn't. All right, we're going to shut this down, but this is where you guys should go. This is Jamie's Patreon. This is what Xmas you'll see present. when you're actually a patron of hers. You'll get to see all the good stuff here. Uh, and then here comes mine, which I know a bunch of you are already on. Here's my good stuff. Oh, hey, here's the tears. So here you guys go. Uh, there's the $20 one for the, uh, the, the five inch stuff. There's the 10 for mini quad stuff, um, or micro quad stuff rather. So yeah, tomorrow we're going to do our first set of three giveaways from Patreon. And yeah, that's going to be tomorrow night at 10 o'clock. And what else? What else? What else? Ciotti FPV on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Little Stellar Fox on Instagram? It's Little Sour Fox and everything. Awesome. So it makes it super easy. What else? Um, oh, Christmas. Side note, Christmas is also my birthday, you guys. I turned 30 this year. Oh my god, do you really? So I turned 30 in like Sucks. two and a I'm half so, weeks. I'm so sorry. And uh, <laughs> if anybody, you know, I'm not big on gifts, but if you want to send me something, let me know, because I like sending things back. But yeah. Alright, guys. Uh, His my hair? hair doesn't need to be cut. Like, look mess. at this, you guys. His hair is, like, not quite as long as mine, but it's getting there. It's, it's kind of a mess. It's so bad. Look at this shit. Look at this. Wait, no. The, I go the other way. If I go the other way, you can really see the uh, the mayhem. There it is. Yeah. Maybe I'll have it, my hair cut by, by next week. <laughs> June Loco, thank you. I'm going to end it on June Loco. Glorious. <laughs> These luscious locks. Look at him go. <laughs> all right, guys. Um, you all rule. Uh, do the things, click the buttons, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow night, maybe, if you're not in the EU and it's not a million o'clock at 10 o'clock Eastern. <laughs> Later, everybody. Thanks for hanging. Bye, guys. Uh...